All right, so we're back. Um, I'm coming to you live. I'm going to try to keep it short. We've got a time to on here. A lot of times we try to front me with the front end. Um, still a lot of good information out here. Like, you know, speaking of jokes, like, I, I was talking to somebody. I don't want to call them a nail. Uh, and I'm going to just. So um, I was talking to a guy like a joke like me. And this guy was like straight, you know, he was just normal. Like he wanted to be college like the regular thing. Uh that's Jay. But it wasn't a sniper study, but you know. So I'm talking to this little monkey nigga turn for real. I'm joking. That's a joke. What's the name? Um so he was this is this other guy now. He he's from the other side of the creek. We we used to hang out a lot like together. Um, so he, he was always like, oh, you're not like that, you're not like that. And to me, like, I, I never want to be like anybody else. You know, I, I like, stand, like, not standing out, but I don't like being a follower. Like, if you, and it's not you no know, Tupac line, but I can use a Tupac line saying, like, if you go on far-headed, I can break, you better break. Yeah. I got my baby Tobias. I call it the baby Tobias, so it's not full-grown indeed. Uh, blow out, texturized blow out. That's the fun. But um, I don't consider that fun. And neither is beard. I know it's a chubby baby with the Muslim beard. I have my double chin. And I just like to blow out. I think I originated at home, which is cool. I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just like, Different. So, but the boy is always like, oh, you look at this boy, but you're not like me from the suburbs. You can sit, uh, follow him. I'm like, dude, I don't follow nobody. I'm like, you know, usually I'm talking to you, he'd be like, part three. And I'm like, I'm just give me reminds me of all this stuff, but I'm out with the solo. Like, you come across me, met me, like you say, I play a lot. So, playing sometimes leads to like, adventurous, wild, unexpected stuff, but whatever. You know, some of these wild things. I'm more of a humor type person to break ice. So I'm energetic and silly as it is like, for the most part. Like, I wasn't always like this, but it's more opposite like this. Um, but as that, like, I was hanging out with this dude. And, like, to me, we had more parallel, even though he was on the one side of the street, I'm from over here. Uh, I think our mindsets at one point, especially going those days, were similar. Even though I talked less, and he was more outgoing. Uh, I don't know what's up with him, but we know what's up with him. So uh, I can show you just to get it. So I started joking with him, like, you know, now both he and I are in a different phase of life, like, like the OP adult and I, um, you know, even though we don't see each other as speak no more, and, like, it's like, it's like the intro to this whole thing, where I'm talking to the guy and saying the dumb stuff to me, but like, you know, like, like he's basically judging me, so he's dumb. I'm not a judgmental person, I guess I should judge me. Come on, come on. So, like, you know, I'm like, all right, well, he was an outdoor cat. All right, he was an alley cat, and I was an outdoor cat. And then I called him house cat. You get what I'm saying? And then I said, well, we're both like, where I'm was an outdoor cat from the suburbs. He was a 
now he's dead. Oh, Sydney. Living in the suburbs now, going back and forth, and I was always going back and forth. And you were uh, just quickly in the work, uh, looking out the window. Us, I'm still. And like, um, it's even funnier to me because it's like I said, at this point, like I'm fully indoors, and he's a domesticated house cat, and then got the house cat that I am, even outdoor cat coming in. So, like, you know, when you got that as a city, you too, like, but it's more of the comparison of the three types of cat. And, like, basically, I put it like that, which started out as a joke, but then in other things, I'm saying, like, this is could be considered trauma informed care if you really look at it. And, like, uh, I know some people wouldn't understand that, but when I break it down, it's like, all right, uh, in the wild, Animals are more aggressive, like whether it's uh, fish in the aquarium compared to the ocean, food animals compared to the wild, um, street dogs and cats. So this is like, and I've had other conversations like it, but I think this is a quality example of trauma informed care. Like I was watching, um, I was watching. The Bulls on Pro League, which is funny because as a jokester, when it first came out, I'm making jokes. Um, I understand why I'm making jokes. But anyway, as a jokester, I was, at first I was work, watching jokes. But it was, had been out for like three, four years. I was in prison. And it's like I watch whatever I watch. The past time I started watching this show. And even though I, I, I don't know if it was supposed to, again, trauma informed care. They're hiring pro league to help stabilize their life and they're changing their lives. But at the same time, I'm looking at it after season after season and they got three segments. They got a, they got the adoption where the people come visit the facility from across the country and they pick a dog that they want to bring home. They fall in love with, they want to bring home for forever. And um, there's another segment, the rescue rescue and that's when they find the animals on the street and stuff and they rescue them and like that and there's a third segment i think there's either two or only three you know, maybe there's a humanized element to where you can focus on the reality show individuals that's the third part of it but it's all intertwined and they segment it up throughout the hour so you know uh like i said in the wild you're more aggressive, you're more. And the reason why I say like you could do a study on this or maybe she has done a 10 year study plus before she was already on TV. I don't remember how many seasons there are, but she, through one episode, you can probably see this. I mean, she's been doing it for years, not only with the inmates, but or the pro leaves, but when it comes to the animals, I mean, like it's not a disrespectful thing that animal testing, you know, not try to do away with animal testing, but this would be like, it's not considered, but I can, as my clinician hat on, I can look at it like that. Where, and I'm explaining it before I try to, I gotta hurry up. So what I'm saying is like, what I'm, what I've recognized through my clinician eyes, I told you I'm multilingual. I'm joking. Anyway, um, in the King's English, that's the just regular talk. Um, So then the whole point in saying that is like when you're watching a show, whether you watch a whole season, all binge, binge watch all season, just a single episode, you see the rest, whether whatever point in the show, you see the rest, whether it's the end of the show, middle of the show, beginning of the show, you see the rest, and you see the rest, you see uh, feral animals, and that's a scared animal. Some 
scared animals have anxiety just like you. Some scared animals are, whether it's aggressive or aggression caused by anxiety, like they're trying to rescue an animal. Sometimes the backs against the wall, the tail between the legs, and they got the teeth showing, the barking. Some are just scared and like anxious. Some like animals do get depressed too. They go for their own uh, thing. And some are, besides being feral, they're uh, besides the uh, 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 emaciated, which means they rib, their ribs are basically exposed through the skin. Like, you know, they worse than half of them. She, 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 she pops up the ribs. She, I'll finish up. This is just, I'm just photographing. But um, at the same time, like, they're, uh, emaciated means their ribs are touching, and like I said, when you're in the wild, they are more aggressive because of sometimes you go three months without eating as a monster, as a snake, as a whatever. Hyena, sometimes you go uh, four months without eating. Sometimes you gotta defend against different predators. Sometimes you really gotta protect yourself and have them protect their factories. There keep your wits about you and basically be hypervigilant. And like, you know, that's a rant for another time, hypervigilant with that noise, but you gotta really have your wits about you. And sometimes that brings out that, it definitely like, when I, you look at circus animals, and like I said, uh, food animals and stuff like that, you see sick breed and warrior, I know some of them might be like, that's a bad example, because that's what they don't. But, um, you see situations like that, it's like, all right, this individual is petting the wrong line that can sh shatter your face with a swat. And it's really like, you know, loved it. It's like a three foot, or I would say six inch high regular cat, but it's a full grown mammoth bear over animal that can really swallow you whole. Just jokes. But um and they're hugging, you can go on YouTube, there are people hugging lions and looking their face and stuff like that. But that's only because they're giving that slab of meat every day. They're giving that slab of meat every day. They're loved, they're nurtured, they're cared for every day. And like that experiment with the plant, getting positive reinforcement, affirmations, being talked to, whatever, and then the plant getting talked down to in the dark and it's like it floats away or stuff like that. But like in the show, like I'm saying, I'm trying to wrap it quicker because I didn't expect to take this long. But um, they're emaciated and they're firm, so they're scared and they're really touching. So like when I say the fully domesticated, it's like that giant. And in the show, you see how they come in emaciated with mites on them or whatever. They come in, they might have, uh, I forget what they call the stuff that they have from engine water and puddle, puddle water and stuff like that. But they have a parasite, but whatever. So you go from that to they start to get used to life in the kennel. They're still anxious, they're still shaky, they're still aggressive. Some of them are aggressive, some of them are still withdrawn. But then by the time where we get to the point of the adoption, there they go from this feral animal lashing out at their person that's trying to rescue them, not attack them, but rescue them, to playing on the ground with a two-year-old during the adoption process with their tail in the air and their face down with their paws and they're running back and forth and they're looking at people's faces and they're happy at times. So, you know, I was just saying like, you know, if you understand trauma-informed care, like I wish I could go on and on, but the time is running out. And I just thought it was an interesting thing, just trauma-informed, because a lot of people don't, might not really understand if you don't go through it. And if you, if you can't understand if you in angry, aggressive, and some environments where you never think you're gonna change, and your life changes, and the adults 